Without quite knowing it, in my mid-teens, I had set off on a journey, a journey of prayer that I'm still on and which, pray God, I will stay on until the end of my earthly life and into eternity. It was a journey that others began for me as they prayed for me, as they brought me to baptism and as they surrounded me in prayer in my early life. And I'm not sharing my journey with you because I think I'm a great prayer, but just to encourage you uh, to do as I did, which is to have a go, to step out in faith, to trust the God who loves us and to know that as we step out, he will meet us. I trust God to meet me on my journey and I trust God to meet you as you too step out to learn about him because you, like me, have the best of all possible prayer guides. So in many and various ways, God responded to the first adult prayer I prayed, if you are there, God, let me know. He brought me into a living relationship with him and he brought me into a lovely communion of faith in an ordinary Anglican church in North Cardiff. I went to the Holy Eucharist in the morning and I went to Evensong in the evening. And as somebody who'd grown up in chapel, I remember learning to love uh, the Eucharist service and Evensong, morning and evening, morning and evening. And I also loved the lovely prayerful uh, walking to and from uh, church from home, that half an hour's quiet uh, to think and to pray and to learn the prayers that were in the book. And I can really remember how exciting it was going to midnight mass, going to church in the middle of the night in the dark. That was very exciting for somebody who'd been brought up going to chapel. So you can imagine how disappointing it was uh, when my second Christmas as a, as a confirmed Anglican, knowing that I wouldn't be able to go to midnight mass because I wasn't very well. Uh, but my vicar had uh, covered in the confirmation class a thing called spiritual communion, so that if you weren't very well, uh, you could um, receive communion um, spiritually. So I knew that um, the communion service for the Midnight Mass was on the radio, and I can remember um, asking my parents if I could have the radio in my bedroom and listening. They must have thought I was... Um, I don't know what they thought. Uh, I had the radio on in my bedroom and I can remember having my prayer book uh, and listening uh, to the service. And then at the time when there were hymns being played, carols being played and really praying deeply that as the communion was being administered in whichever cathedral it was, the service was coming through, that God would give me uh, the grace uh, of the Eucharist, even though I wasn't able to be present. It's a very vivid memory. And little did I know how important that moment would be, not just for the teenager who was unwell in Cardiff in 1976, uh, but for the adult woman uh, in Carmarthenshire here and now in this pandemic. God meets us in our need. God is not bound by time or space. Uh, we cannot at the moment be physically in our churches. We cannot receive Holy Communion. But the Holy Spirit is not bound by that. And as we open our hearts and our lives to him, God will meet us in our need.